Hey, welcome or welcome back. My name's Aiden, rhymes with Maiden. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I added contrast sleeves to this sweatshirt. Quick backstory. This sweatshirt was a gift from my boss. She runs the book club that I decided to cut up. <laughs> It's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. It worked out. <laughs> I've been itching to do sheer sleeves on a t-shirt or a sweatshirt for a while now. When I got this sweatshirt, uh, it was a perfect opportunity. So even though we had a Texas freeze a couple weeks ago, I was running out of time to wear it. Why not get a little bit more longevity out of it by adding mesh sleeves? Okay, so let's talk supplies. This sweatshirt, really isn't uh, anything too complicated. It's a Gildan brand. I think you can find them at Michael's. Uh, she had them custom ordered. I think it's like a vinyl. So if you're into cry cut or vinyl or anything like that, you can totally make this yourself. I got this fabric from Joann's. I think it's like a nylon blend. I recommend sticking to a nylon rather than going with tulle because it's gonna be super itchy if you go with tulle. I also wanted to do like a running stripe going down the side. So I checked out what Joann's had for ribbon and I was hoping that I could just find a plain rainbow ribbon, but I found instead this really cool beaded trim. It's like a really tiny version of those beads that you find on like a keychain, and it's actually already attached to this uh, mesh that's very, very similar to the mesh I grabbed for the rest of the sleeve. But you could probably do this with any sort of ribbon. You'll also need a sewing machine. I have a heavy duty Singer. It's about eight years old. You'll also need bobbins, general all-purpose thread. How cool is this ombre thread? You'll also need pins or clips. I used both, but if you only wind up using one make it pins, you'll see why later. Sharp fabric scissors or pinking shears to help stop fabric fraying. A seam ripper. It's like an eraser for sewing mistakes. And I also recommend a zipper foot if you have thick or raised trim. All right, let's get started. First, you're gonna wanna set up your bobbin and thread your machine. Every machine can be a little bit different, so check your user manual for specifics on how to thread your machine. Lay your shirt or your sweatshirt down flat and decide where you want your contrast sleeve to start. We'll use a straight edge, like a book, to mark where I'm gonna cut. I just used a ballpoint pen for this. Next, I used the pinking shears to cut the first sleeve off. We're gonna use this as a template for the other side. Clip it to the second sleeve and cut again. For the rest of these steps, just assume that we're going to do everything twice for, you know, two sleeves. Next, cut open the sleeve close to the inner seam and cut off the cuff too, but make sure to save it. Don't throw it out. Next, lay out the mesh fabric and pin the sleeves that you just cut open face down on the mesh. Cut the mesh around the old sleeve, giving yourself about a quarter inch to a half inch of seam allowance. The mesh was tough to cut with the pinking shears, so I used my regular fabric scissors for this. Then remove the original sleeve and pin or clip the sides together. We're gonna use a plain old straight stitch for this first part and just sew a straight line down the edge of the sleeve. And if you can set your stitch length, set it to like a medium range. I wound up going over the straight stitch with a medium width zigzag stitch for extra stability. The straight stitch by itself could cause the mesh to gather too much, but the zigzag stitch on its own was difficult to use on the mesh because the machine had a tougher time grabbing the fabric. So I layered the stitches together. Next, we'll attach the sleeve to the shirt's armhole. I start by taking the mesh seam and matching it up with the shirt seam at the bottom of the hole and work your way around. Make sure that you're pinning outside to outside. It helps to turn the sleeve inside out and put it inside of the shirt. Now is when we'll also attach the running stripe. I used the seam at the top of the shoulder as an alignment point and pinned it in between the mesh and the shirt. Make sure it's facing the right way. We can use a shorter straight stitch now that we have the mesh attached to something thicker. 
When you're sewing the sleeve on, make sure that the mesh is on top or facing up so that it doesn't get caught in the teeth of the machine. Since my racing stripe had beading, I went very slow so I didn't rip the thread or break a needle. I recommend hand cranking your machine if you're also using beaded trim. Now turn the sleeve right side out. We're gonna do another stitch around the armhole to get that seam to lay flat. This sewing machine feature took me so long to realize a lot of machines actually have a base that can slide out, which makes it much easier when you're sewing things like sleeves. I slid the sleeve around the smaller base and started a zigzag stitch at the bottom of the armhole. I used a zigzag stitch so that it covers a wider area of the seam, kind of like a knockoff serging. Again, go slow over the trim. Now we're gonna need to attach the stripe down the sleeve. The easiest way I found to make sure the stripe is straight is to lay the shirt flat on its back and flatten out any sleeve wrinkles. I rolled the shirt up here because it kept falling off the edge of the desk. Pin the stripe to the sleeve starting near the wrist. This is where you're going to need pins instead of clips. This is also where that zipper foot becomes handy. It's going to let you get a closer stitch if you have a dimensional trim like I do. All we need here is a straight stitch down each side of the stripe. Since you've got multiple layers, you can probably get away with a shorter stitch length. Keep a little bit of tension on the sleeve as you go so that everything lays flat when you're done and it doesn't have any gathering. Snip off the extra stripe at the end. I used kitchen scissors so that the metal beads didn't damage my actual fabric scissors. Turn the cuff inside out and slide it over the sleeve backwards so that the bottom of the cuff is kind of facing or pointing towards the shoulder. Then switch your foot back to the standard foot and begin taking a straight stitch around the cuff. I left a little bit of seam allowance on the cuff so that I wasn't sewing directly onto the elastic part of the cuff. And then added another straight stitch over the seam so it too lays flat. You can clean up your seams by trimming back any excessive fabric allowances here. And then of course repeat all of that for the second sleeve. Here's the finished montage and some thoughts. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. A couple of things that I would probably change if I were to do something like this again, pay attention to the size of the armhole. I don't know if you can tell here, but this is a pretty, pretty wide open armhole. If I'm not careful, then we might have a little bit of a situation here. You've made it this far into the video. Why not go ahead and hit that like button for me? Also consider subscribing if you're into seeing more DIYs. I put out new videos about once a month. Also, I have a Redbubble. What's a Redbubble? If you haven't heard of Redbubble, it is a service that helps support thousands of artists. The artists just upload their work to the site and Redbubble prints it onto pretty much any kind of merch that you can imagine. Uh, they actually have some of the softest jersey t-shirts ever. I have one of my favorite t-shirts is actually from Redbubble. So link is down below if you want to go and check that out. Uh, I guess that's it. I've run out of things to say. Bye!